Hello, welcome to the Electronic Superhighway Continental US Alaska and Hawaii um, discussion. My name is Mrs. Morn and I am here with Mrs. Wyatt. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about the artist. The artist is, should have asked you how to pronounce this, Nam Jun Paik. I don't know how to pronounce that name, um, <laughs> but that's how it's spelled right there. Mm -hmm. And then we have contemporary is the historical period, the materials and techniques. So this has 51 uh, channel installation, including closed circuit television, um, custom electronics, neon lighting, steel and wood, color and sound. And the intended purpose, and you can see all these things in here, by the way, the intended purpose, the artwork was made to suggest that what unifies the United States is not so much transportation, but electronic communication, which is something we're really familiar with now. Mm -hmm. And the patron, uh, this was made for the German pavilion at the 1993 Ven Venice Biennale and uh, Pate, Pick produced a series of works about the relationship between Eastern and Western cultures. And now it's your turn, Mrs. White. So we'll go ahead and get the questions answered. So the first one is, what did Nam Jun Paik uh, predict in his report to the art program of the Rockefeller Foundation in 1974? So he actually was the first person who thought up the whole concept of the World Wide Web which is really interesting. The second question is, what did Payek, uh, what is Payek considered to be? He's the father of video art. And then number three, what are some questions about technology, their impact in our culture that Electronic Superhighway proposed? So the first one was the actual physical scale of the work. The number of simultaneous clips makes it difficult to absorb any details, resulting in informational overload. The second thing is the visual tension between the static brightness of the neons and the brightness of the screens. This causes, uh, it also points out similar tensions between national and local frames of reference. So it kind of is talking a lot and there this is really in the news right now about how you know there's local news and then there's uh national news and they're just they're blending into each other in such a way that it never has happened before so there's a lot of concepts that have happened since 1995 with this that have totally changed this piece mm -hmm. and we were talking about the idea right. of restoration versus conservation right um in art there are some historians that believe you should only um keep a project that um from deteriorating versus mm -hmm. restoration where you are repairing any deteriorating parts right and so this piece could change meaning depending on how good they conserve or restore it and we even talked about, is it still as, um, is it still, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> yeah, I mean, is it still going to be too much for you to handle when you look at it? Or are we so used to seeing screens and hearing all kinds of fluctuations and sound and <laughs> experience that is this not as overwhelming as right. it was at the time in 1995 because it would have been a different experience for somebody who's never seen this many screens all together and everything that's going on all at the same time you're not used to uh, screening out quite so much mm -hmm. so i mean i'm sure that the, the experience has changed since 1995. Mm -hmm. also we were talking about how closed circuit like we're so used to seeing ourselves but back then if you actually saw yourself you were intrigued with it yes but you're not intrigued anymore no <laughs> so definitely this is a very changeable piece <laughs> yes it's really interesting i'd like to see how it um and affects you guys too when you look at it <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> all right thank you for watching and i hope that you enjoyed